Since the passage of this measure at the legislature, the community has held peaceful educational events in the Capital District in opposition to House Bill 499. This afternoon, we'll be holding our fourth event, a sign waving at 3.30, followed by an evening vigil at 6 p.m. outside of the governor's mansion to continue to voice our concern regarding the century-long leases of ceded lands, which make up the corpus of public lands, to private and military entities that would, up, that would be authorized by House Bill We're joined here today, not only by Native Hawaiian leaders, by all, but also by community leaders and religious leaders who have questioned the harm this measure would have on U.S. reconciliation with the Native Hawaiian community. As we maintain unrelinquished claims to the Hawaiian Kingdom Crown and Government lands that make up the vast majority of the state's public land portfolio. These lands were taken from the Hawaiian people without our consent and without compensation. It is not only Native Hawaiian interest that is foreclosed by this measure, but there are no safeguards for the public interest as well. Extensions won't allow for public bidding and competition and won't allow the public ample opportunity to look at the best um, use of these lands. Century-long leases would also give developers pseudo ownership of these lands and new leases will apply with an exception of holding on to the lands for at least three generations. With an expectation of holding on to the lands for at least three generations. So basically, those who apply for leases in the future will have that expectation of holding on to those lands for three generations. That's what this measure will do. Mahalo. So I'm going to um, be followed next by Pahel, who's a uh, clergyman here. We ask for the veto of House Bill 499. We ask that the governor please veto that. I speak on behalf of the people of Hawaii, present now and for future generations. The history has been that the land has been taken away. Land is power. Land is aina that belongs to all people. Going back to the doctrine of discovery, land has been dispersed and taken away for the needs of the regular Makainana, the people of this land. And so as we stand here, we ask and plead, please, we do not need this bill. We need this land for all people that we may sustain and grow and love and aloha one another. Thank you. Yo. Hey, Wendy. Oh, hello, hello. Next, we'll have John Osorio from Hawaii. Hail, John. Hail. Sorry. Aloha, Mike Hako. Aloha. We urge the governor to veto this bill. My name is Jonathan Osorio. I'm a plaintiff, or was a plaintiff, in the lawsuit that we brought against the state in 1994 to enjoin the state from selling, exchanging, and then otherwise uh, basically taking out of the Ceded Lands Trust lands that belong to Native Hawaiians by law, by custom, by history, uh, and by any kind of measurement of morality. That lawsuit actually won at the state Supreme Court, was then challenged by the then Republican governor uh, to the U.S. Supreme Court. The Supreme Court did not overturn um, the state Supreme Court's favorable ruling, instead remanded it back and demanded that it asked it to reconsider it um, using certain criteria or not using certain criteria that the federal government or the federal Supreme Court decided was inappropriate. We had an opportunity at that point to get this settled and to actually have some relief brought to the Kanaka Maoli people, whose lands, the former crown and government lands of the kingdom, have been used by the state of Hawaii for its own purposes. 
My fellow plaintiffs, including the Office of Hawaiian Affairs, elected at that time to withdraw from the case in exchange for state legislation that they believed would protect these lands into the future and protect the state and join the state essentially from selling, exchanging, and in otherwise alienating these lands from our control. That has not happened. Instead, what we have seen in, in, in subsequent years has been, have been increasing arguments and disputes over the use of our ceded lands, one case in point being Mauna Kea. Now we are facing this legislation, which basically does the same thing. Justice delayed is justice denied. I call on the governor to veto this bill. It is a sensible thing for a democratic governor to do. And in the absence of that, I call on the Office of Hawaiian Affairs to reinstate this suit. Heyo! Heyo! Hey. 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 representing our youth. Aloha mai kakoa, um, obao no kainoa, o ko ala kumau nao ke hea koho e kuku o kalimu kele O ka wāho a ka mano a kuku kai a no hei i a ko ala upoko o ahu mai ao. Um, aloha, so in representing um, our future generations, um, when it comes to many of the problems that have come from these leases and the past injustices and the current injustices that have been imposed upon our people, um, many of these issues have stemmed long before our time. And in order to address, and our generation is very committed to addressing all of these injustices. And in order to address these injustices, we need that opportunity to really look at the future land use and work with our kupuna, our makua, our elders, and our, um, the current adults here to guide us in making those decisions for these lands. And in the lease extensions, we're not guaranteed that those who have watched and those who have observed the past injustices and the ongoing injustices that some of these leaseholders have been conducting, we won't be guaranteed that their presence will be with us, the presence of our kupuna. So in the next 40 years and even beyond that, because they can keep applying for these lease extensions, it will be not only alienate, alienating us from being able to dictate what occurs on these lands, but alienating us from an opportunity to take a multi-generational approach for the future use of these lands. And that's something that I feel that we cannot support. And that's one of the reasons why for the opioid generation, we need to oppose this bill and we demand the governor veto this bill. Um, so that's all I have to say. Uh, mahalo nui for this opportunity. Oh, yeah. 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 I'm Steve Costa. I'm one of the um, Native Hawaiian clergy of the Episcopal Church of Hawaii. Ki Kamehameha and Queen Emma founded this church. Queen Lilio, Ki Kamehameha and Queen Emma worshipped at the cathedral behind us. Vahipana. This is Vahipana. Akupuna. They grieve. Makainana grieve. Keiki grieve. We are Keiki Okaaina. We, we are children of the Apua. This is our Aina. These lands belong to our people. This law, this bill is heaven. We beg you, Governor Ige, the powers that be, please veto HB 499. The Apua, we pray. Mahalo, mahalo. 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 I believe that's all, um, that's all the speakers we have today. Uh, mahalo for coming. Um, if everyone's available, um, so you can feel free to ask some of the leaders questions about everyone here is standing against House Bill 499. Um, we do have um, Kalupu, Kukai Kalupu here. Oh, do you want to say a few words? Aloha, I'm Jessica Dos Santos, president of the Kahuku Community Association. Any words about House Bill 499? Yes, please, Governor Ige, please veto the bill. It's never too late to do the right thing. So please do the right thing right now.
Okay, so I want to just thank you all for coming. Hello, Civil Beat. Coming. Civil Beat, right? Yeah, great. So, thank you, Mahalani. Um, thank you, Star Advertiser, for coming. Uh, and if you need, I think they're going to need your name. So, please feel free to um, ask follow up questions to anyone here. Well, the question is how come uh, the church or religious organizations are involved in this issue? Uh, churches are a part of the moral uh, leadership in a community. And uh, churches are dedicated to serving all people and, and working for justice in the land and being committed to serving the needs of all people in a community or a place like Hawaii. And uh, so it's very important to hear the voice of, of those who, who pray on a daily basis and those who hope for the best, that justice and mercy will emerge for all people of this land. That's, that's the hope. Uh, but the, the evidence in the history of injustice in Hawaii is, is so clear, so clear to religious organizations. We have uh, churches like the descended denomination of the United Churches of Christ, the early missionaries, issued an apology to the native Hawaiians in 1993. And just a few years ago, the United Methodist Church, the Hawaii District, also issued an apology for its own complicity in the overthrow that took place in 1893. The Episcopal Church is a church that was founded by King Kamehameha and Queen uh, the Fourth and Queen Emma. And it was their hope that the Episcopal Church would be the church of the kingdom of Hawaii. And so many churches, many denominations in Hawaii understand the history and want to be part of the healing and reconciliation of the great wrongs that took place many years ago. You know, how can we move forward if we don't address the wrongs that, that occurred many years ago? When, in, when injustices don't get addressed, and they now over a hundred years, these lands, these leases come out of a, an era of great injustices that haven't been recognized appropriately. When you have great injustices that aren't addressed for that, that amount of time, what you see is a, an acceptance, a, a cultural violence that is, that is accepted in our society, and people just think, well, it's okay, but it's not okay. And Hawaiians for, for years, for hundreds of years now, have tried to raise their voices to ask for justice in this land. And while it may take another thousand years to bring justice to Hawaii, we, Hawaiians will never give up the fight to correct Yo. the wrongs, Yo. correct the wrongs, and, and to see Hawaii be a place where justice and, immer and mercy would emerge for all people in Hawaii. And that's the state motto, in fact. The life of the land is perpetuated in righteousness. Thank you, Kahu. Any other questions? Uh, some, of, some of the lands are shopping malls and commercial spaces. Are you opposed to that as well? Well, like oh, the Prince Kuhio Mall. The Prince Kuhio Mall. Actually, the Prince Kuhio Mall sits on Hawaiian homelands, okay. and uh, part of it does sit on public lands. Um, what we also there there are some beneficiaries here of Hawaiian homelands, and their concerns is that they were not uh, properly consulted prior to this measure being introduced, because it would affect the Department of Hawaiian homelands as well, and allow for them to extend their leases for 40 years. But we're not we're not anti anything, right? We're not anti business. We, um, there is a process for 65 year long leases, and if 65 years isn't enough, then you know then then I I, I don't think it's fair to allow certain people to have an extension just because they don't think it's enough. You know, a hundred year long lease is uh, longer than anyone's lifetime, most people's lifetime. So. Thank you. Any other questions? So 
we'll be here um, at 3.30, um, sign waving. We'll, we have a rally as well, so we'll be singing some songs. Then we'll be moving closer to the governor's mansion and um, uh, serenading him outside of his house for a couple hours with Aloha Aina Mele. What is the best way for the public to participate through our online or on social media? Uh, best way, uh, you can actually support our efforts by buying one of our shirts that we're selling right now. Or share anything on social media. Thank you. Contact the governor's office. And contact, contact yes, sorry. And, request, and contact your representative and senators at a request for them to request the governor to do this. And you can call every single day as well. You can call every day and email every day. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Appreciate it. Aloha, my name is Helani Sonora Pale. I'm with Kalahui Hawaii, Komike Kalai Aina. We're standing here today at St. Andrew's Cathedral in unity, in opposition to House Bill 499. House Bill 499 would allow developers to have century-long leases of Hawaiian Kingdom Crown and Government lands that was illegally seized at the time of the overthrow and then transferred to the United States in the state of Hawaii. These lands are um, lands for which we as Kanaka Maoli do have unrelinquished rights and claims to. Therefore, it is imperative that we voice our concern over these century-long leases to developers. What that would do is foreclose our interests and rights and claims to these lands for three generations. It's, uh, it's concerning for not just Kanaka Maoli, but for all people of Hawaii, because it it's, doesn't allow for the public to give input or decide the best use for these lands. These are lands that are supposed to be used for the public good and for the benefit of Native Hawaiians, as uh, stated in the Admissions Act. Uh, we will be here till about eight o'clock tonight, where we will be holding a vigil uh, by the governor's mansion. We will also be sign waving and having a rally this afternoon. So. This is our third week we've been here um, and we just, we welcome anyone to come stand with us. It's not, and we are very happy with all the support and with everyone coming out every single week for this event. Um, tonight we'll be singing Mele Aloha Aina, which is songs of the land. The land is more than just a commodity for us as Kanaka Maoli. The land is our mother. It is on uh, Papahanao Moku. It's, it's, uh, it's part of us and who we are, and it's part of our genealogy. Um, the land is that which nourishes us, and it uh, protects us, and it is part of who we are as Kanaka. So what is done to the land is done to us. We um, love our land. This is our Hawaii, and we will stand for our land um, if we have to, as long as possible. Mahalo, everyone. Lokako, my name is Umi Perkins. I'm a political scientist and Hawaiian history teacher. I live in Aiea Oahu. I'm testifying in opposition to HB 499, extending leases on ceded lands and calling upon the governor to veto the measure. My main opposition to the lease extension is the clouded title on the so-called ceded lands. In particular, the crown lands were indisputably private lands. I know this because I've held in my hand a ledger from the Hawaii archives that was entitled Private Lands of Kamehameha IV. While the U.S. Supreme Court ruled in the Iwakalani versus United States in 1910 that these lands somehow became public, this is related to their passing to Kamehameha V rather than Queen Emma. Most citizens and certainly most legislators know that there's only one way to make private property public, eminent domain. And nowhere is it argued that these lands transferred pub to public ownership uh, through eminent domain. 
This means the state is then leasing private lands. We should ask ourselves also if the Supreme Court's ruling was valid given the unlikeliness that it would rule against itself and in favor of a monarch that the U.S. deposed. We can at the very least ask questions around the legality of leasing the portion of the ceded lands that appear by any reasonable measure to be private property. Further, I would remind legislators and the public of the homesteading program initiated by Sanford Dole, which created 999 year leases. If we think about how long that is, 999 years ago was the middle of the Middle Ages in Europe, but more importantly, it is longer than the real estate system we are currently in has been in existence. In other words, a lease that long is for all intents and purposes private property. And in this case, it's land, it's government land belonging to a government that the United States Congress and the President admitted in 1993 to have illegally overthrown. HB 499 does not call for 999 year leases, but it does allow leases that are longer than a lifetime and so in a similar way it makes virtual private property out of public. I'll conclude by reminding lawmakers that the question of what the state is able to do with ceded lands is by no means completely up to them. This question was, as, as most know, the subject of a Supreme Court case over the sale of public lands in 2009, Hawaii versus Office of Hawaiian Affairs. While the Supreme Court ruled that the state was not restricted in its land transactions by the apology resolution, this was only the case, quote, until claims over such land are resolved. This case shows that restrictions do exist, and because such claims remain un unresolved, the state has a duty, it would appear, not to dispose of control of these lands for such long periods, effectively creating private property out of public lands that are to be held in trust, in part, for the benefit of Native Hawaiians. I call on the governor to veto HB 499. Mahalo nui ya oko. Aloha. Hawaii and everybody else who's tuning into the Pai Aina. We're here at the Kapikala in front of uh, Wakinakwana Place or Washington Place, the home of our beloved Queen Lili'u Kalani. And, and we're here today to, um, to ask the governor to veto House Bill 449 uh, because it is a travesty against our Lahui Hawaii. Uh, first of all, I'm very disappointed in the, in the legislature who actually voted for this. So that now it's ending up on the governor's desk. I hope in the governor, in his wisdom, will veto this bill because it is really a travesty how it affects Native Hawaiians. And especially when we have some 30,000 Native Hawaiians waiting for their homestead, Department of Hawaiian Homelands, to have uh, the Hawaiian homelands thrown into this mix that you know they can affect how the leases will be or the lack of leases available for Native Hawaiians who are waiting. Um, and I hope that everybody who sees this will be more educated. Uh, anybody who knows the real history of Hawaii understands how the lands went from kingdom lands to the fake uh, provisional government, to the fake Republic of Hawaii, to the fake annexation of Hawaii, to the fake territory of Hawaii, and the fake state of Hawaii. And even then now, the fake state uh, fails to uphold their obligation, their kuleana the responsibility to follow through with the Department of Hawaiian Homelands. It's been misused and abused by all these elected officials, people that we supposedly trust for the well-being, who especially who, are, who handle the Department of Hawaiian Homelands, a trust which is meant to benefit Native Hawaiians, at least 50% or more. But when we have 30,000 
qualified Hawaiians who do not have a home yet, that to me is a slap in the face. And this bill that was proposed by the legislature will disenfranchise Native Hawaiians, and I'm totally against that. And I'm gonna vote no against those people that we elected from our district in Mililani. Shame on you folks for voting for this bill. And as a Native Hawaiian, I'm standing here. I took off from work because I truly believe this is very serious. I'm even here on behalf of those Hawaiians that are sitting over there, so I represent them too. Even though they have a job, I'm here to support, represent them who kind of come out here and join us on the sidewalk and make our voices known. And hopefully the governor in his, uh, in his wisdom will vote no, will veto this bill so that hopefully the 30,000 Hawaiians that are waiting for their homestead will finally get some kind of um, justification for waiting all this all this time as many others have died. And so, um, to all my Kanaka Hawaii, Aloha Wau Ya Oko, E Kue Mau, Kue Ke Aupuni, E Kala Koheva, and uh, join us, support us, Vito 499. And uh, that's all I have to say, Mahalo Nui. I'm a Hawaiian, just doing my part, and I wish all the beneficiaries of Hawaiian homes would be here to represent because it also affects them as well as those who are still waiting for theirs. So, uh, mahalo, keep up the fight, brother. Thanks for videotaping, for being out here and catching, capturing this moment, this historic moment, and hopefully, um, you know, our voices will be heard. And uh, yeah, that's why I'm here. So, mahalo. My daughter has a sign for, you know, Dolsto Hawaii because it started with them, right? And the government or the military of the U.S. using their bullying to come over here and, you know, overthrow the queen. So now we're looking at perpetuating like their legacy and like keeping them here for another 60 years. No way. That's, it's not going to happen. It cannot happen, especially for my kids. It cannot. So. We're here till the last of the high now. because I don't have enough Hawaiian, just 25%. And I'm waiting for them to bring the bill down. But you know, these foreigners don't even have a drop of Hawaiian, not even a dot of Hawaiian. And I don't see why they should be allowed to have their foreign companies on our native Hawaiian lands for dollar a year. Oh, oh, tole no to. That's not fair to us Kanakas who are still fighting to this day and still will continue to fight as, as long as we can. So, you know, Governor Aole Ike, please listen to us. We are Hawaiian people who are still fighting for our land. You know, 
We represent our Hawaii. You represent our Hawaii. So please do the pono thing and represent us as Kanakas who was here to begin with. You know, this is for our next generations to come. To come, the next keikis of our land, of our island, of our sea. From the mountain to the ocean. We need our lands back. Please be pono with us. And please understand us and where we are coming from. So please, B to HB491. Everybody else out there, please come out. There's still time. Still time to go online to call Governor Ige's office to please veto the HP 499. Until then, aloha aina, kapu aloha, kue, and hue. Aloha. about Queen Lilio Kalani and how St. Andrew's Cathedral was actually her church. She had a little gate on the side of her house that she would walk through and go to church. She would have tea with the nuns. She was never baptized until she came to this church. The fountain at St. Andrew's Cathedral was the fountain that our queen was, was baptized at. The land means much more than some kind of commodity to us. The land is our mother. We have a geological connection to this Aina. We have, it's our birthright. It's part of who we are. So what happens to the Aina happens to us. So this issue is really a big issue because nobody, nobody should have a century long lease other than a Hawaiian homesteader. Oh, yeah. Nobody. That's too long. That's, uh, no. That's beyond the average lifespan of a person. So a 100 year long lease is way too long. And that's why we're standing here asking the governor to veto House Bill 499. I want to, um, also, Mahalo Kaleo for bringing out the sound system every week so we can hear speeches, so that we can have mele and sing of our aina and, and just be together, right? Be together and just stand together. So, Mahalo um, also to Jimia, who always brings the water every week. Mahalo to Daniel Anthony for the wonderful Hi Hawaii. If any of you don't have a Hi Hawaii, please go and grab one. We have we have hundreds. Mahalo for that. So really, I, I'm just not in a mood to to do any kind of kue chance right now because I'm just kind of kaumaha about this whole thing. It's been three weeks, and this is the fourth stance that we've been taking. So it's really, it's Koma already, you know? But I want to call Gina. Where's the teacher Gina? Is she here? And Makaya. Okay. So we're going we're gonna to have them open us up with Oli and Chad. But um, mahalo everybody for being here. And Kule is on her way to give us some of her sightings later today. Mahalo everyone. Oh, my God. 
private lines public and that is eminent domain. And there was not even an argument that that had happened in the case of the crime lines. We also need to question the Supreme Court. Uh, it's very unlikely that the Supreme Court would rule against the United States in favor of a plea that they had just deposed. That just seems very unlikely. So, So the upshot of all of this is the state is leasing private lands. I would also remind uh, people of the initiative in 1895 when Sanford Dole created 999-year leases. Now what is the purpose of that? That's, that's a thousand years, that's a really, really long time. You know, possibly almost as long as Hawaiians have been here, much longer than the United States has existed. And so how can you lease lands uh, for a period of time that's older than the system of real estate that you're leasing it in? It's virtually, it's basically creating private property if you have a lease that long. Now, 499 doesn't create 999 year leases, but it creates leases that are longer than most people's lifetime. And so for all intents and purposes, this would create private property in a sense as well. So the, the final point that I want to make is that it's not simply up to the legislature to do whatever they want in the state of Mass. And we know this because there was a case in 2009, Hawaii versus Oha, where that was debated. And the Supreme Court uh, looked at the question can the state of Hawaii dispose of state lands? Now, they were looking at it in terms of the apology law, but my, the point I'm trying to make is, because that case existed, that means there are some constraints on what the legislature can do when it comes to state lands. So they're not just able to do whatever they want. So I'm arguing they should not and possibly cannot extend these leases to a point of time where it's longer than most people's lifetimes. So those are my three arguments for um, calling upon the governor to veto this bill um, because it's already passed both houses. We're relying on the governor to veto the bill uh, because these lands are supposed to be held in trust, as everybody knows, in part for the benefit of Native Hawaiians. So, uh, calling on the governor to do the right thing. Mahalo nui aoko. Yeah! 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 Okay, we're not aligning things up now, okay? So we have Brother Steven coming to the mic. He's going to play some melee. And... We have a lot of a cryo over here, we know every pool of dance there is. <laughs> okay, mahalo brother Steven. Hi. Eww! Eww! <laughs>
Um, we're standing here for our Aina. Our Aina is not a commodity to us. It's part of who we are. Our Aina is not for sale. Our Aina is our birthright. It is part of who we are, our genealogy, Papahana Moku. We are all descended from the Aina. And like Uncle Keloko always says, the people will rise from the Lepo, from the Aina. That's the prophecy, right? The people will rise up and we will change Hawaii. So, I'm on my hello everybody for being here um, today. And again, if you guys are hungry, there's beef stew, um, there's water, there's also um, restroom. There's a restroom on St. Andrew's Cathedral that we all can use. So, if you, and you guys know directions, Uncle knows the way. So, um, Mahalo Representative for being here. You want to say a few words? Say, but I want to introduce Representative Danaden. He's here with us. He was here. He was with us for the past few events. He's one of the representatives that voted no. So we do have some allies of the legislature. This measure from the very beginning, from January, we have been fighting to stop it. He was one of those representatives that voted no. If, if you guys know, you know, if you know your representative and your legislator, and if you, I think I have to post it up, but you find out if they voted no or yes on this measure, and ask them if they voted yes, why did they vote yes? If they voted no, thank them for voting no. If not, if, they, if everyone did their job at the legislature, we wouldn't have to stand here on the street, as we always end up doing, to, do, to make sure the right thing gets done. Waiting for Bronson, he's waiting for the light. Oh. <laughs> okay, but I love this brother, Bronson, Bronson Ozawa. I first heard him speak about three years ago at a Mauna Kea hearing. And I just want to say, Mauna Kea has really raised the consciousness of a lot of our people, especially our young people. He actually organized a huge sign waving in front of the capital. Capital, hundreds of people came out. This young man is one of our future leaders. And I'm so proud when I see our young people standing up and saying something. Because it ain't easy to always keep having to stand on the street, to keep having to testify, to keep having to write letters, to write emails, to, to call the press. Bombardment that we, um, of things that we need to do as Kanaka to even be Kanaka on this Aina. Aloha, my name is uh, Bronson, or Taino, I really not sure how to my name. Now for the Amuku, uh, the idea and the beautiful Moku of Kuala Moku. Um, so in regards to HB 499, our staff is the same as Tokyo. We cannot really allow any more further detriment to our Aina. Another hundred years of mismanagement, of non-appropriate use of our lands without even Hawaiians consenting to the use of these lands. These lands, as Umi has said earlier, were never ceded to the United States, their seized crown and government lands of the Hawaiian Kingdom. They are not to be utilized in the way that they're being utilized. And to further, the, to further extend these land usage, um, these leases, really, is to build this sort of sense of corporate entitlement to our lands. That form of entitlement has got to go. For example, on Maui, Alexander and Baldwin will not be allowed another 100 plus year leases for diverting our streams, for taking away our life-giving waters of our Aina. We need to end these leases and to really get back onto the table and discuss as OPL with the guidance of our kupuna and our makua what is the appropriate use of these lands. And many of these lands have not been used appropriately. 
and we need to right these injustices that have happened in our past and that are happening and that are ongoing. So we need to right these wrongs and we need to end these and renegotiate them. This is just Heba built upon Heba and we cannot allow bills like this to pass on to future generations. We are fortunate that currently some of our kupuna here can recall that some of these leases were given and the, and the constant past issues that have happened for those VCs. In another 40 years, we're not going to have that opportunity for the guidance of those kupuna who can recall these issues. So we really need to look at this and think a multi-generational standpoint in dealing with these issues. Not just passing it on in another 40 years and if they continue to give it 40 and 40 and 40 more as the bills written. They may as well give them the mask. And it's not theirs to give at the end of the day. That's the basis. We need to stand on a firm foundation that has been laid out to us by our Kuna. They signed the Kuna petitions of 1898 and we stand with them. Yeah. We never consent to the picking of these yeah. lands and never consent to their use of these lands and these not appropriate uses. If anybody should have the land, as Anki Helani said, it should be our people, the Kanaka yeah. We're entitled and we have the ability and the skills to determine for ourselves how these lands are utilized. So who are they to take these lands? Who are they to determine under their rules of law? and govern these lands. It's our land. We never relinquish our rights to these lands. And that is the firm foundation that our generation and the future generations have to stand on. The foundations laid out to us by our kupuna. Oh, yeah. And we always appreciate all of you, Makua, all of the kupuna who continue to guide us because we cannot do it alone. And the EK continues to. So the public what is the future of these lands that we want to see? So this is Mahalo Nui, Mahalo Nui for your introduction, Andy, and for all of you guys, um, Kapu'o for our generation, Mahalo. Oh, my God. 
So Hi'ilave is also a place name on Hawaii Island. Then we also have Nakahau or Mauna Kea. Everybody say Mauna Kea. Mauna Kea. Mauna Kea. Now we say Mauna Loa. Mauna Loa. Mauna Loa. Nakahau or Mauna Kea Kuni or Nakeahi Mauna Loa Kuumole. Kualalai. We say Kualalai. So we're bringing it to the mana of our of our places, the mana the mana of our species into the space. And the reason I say that is because it, it's important that we stand in Pu'e. It's important that we resist the heva that was placed literally illegally and wrongly onto this aina, onto this aina, onto this kanaka. It's important to Pu'e that. Everybody say, Kue! Kue! It's also important to slip into spaces of aloha and peace and rest and nourishment. Not only Kue, 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 Kue. Sometimes it's Kupono. Yeah. Sometimes it's Kumo. Sometimes it's Kilo. Sometimes we observe. And sometimes we take in the mana of this breeze, this wind coming through. Sometimes we wonder what her name is. Sometimes we think about this sun and how this sun is the same sun of the Kupuna who came 40 generations before us. Sometimes we think of that. And sometimes it brings us joy, you know. The reason we stand here in resistance is because of the way that our Aina our joy, our aina is our medicine, our aina is our, is our, is our oli oli, our happiness, yeah? So let's remember that today, I'm so grateful. So let's sing this song. This song is called Kula Easy. I don't know if all of you guys are, let's see guys over there. Oh, Hawaii. Yeah? I gotta pull up the words. Because her hair is on purpose. So when we came to this 
area earlier today, we were looking around in the sky and we noticed the Manu Oku. And the Manu Oku's presence is very much so important. So you know, I glanced over that way, and I thought, I'm like, oh, bloody pigeons, and bloody ducks. So I just wanted to remind us that although our Aina is crowded with pigeons and ducks, <laughs> The Manu Oku in the natives still exists. Yeah. The Manu Oku and the natives still exist. Yeah. And those Manu Oku in this particular area as we Ku is very important. So Helani, we're carried here for many different reasons, Helani, or he sent you our aloha because it's because of your fight to Alu Kapote, that we are all here today. Oh. So, Eka Ohana Eka never mind the pigeons. Oh, yeah. You are a Manu Oku, you are an Iwa, you are an Alai, whatever Manu you are to associate with, you are a native, and this is our land. Yeah. This is that. Vito HD 499. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Okay, maybe everybody doesn't know this one. When I say Pai Kalima, you put your hands together like a prayer, yeah, like a prayer, and then you make it like a cup. Like, like, you, you just make it a little bit like a bubble in your hand, yeah? And then you twist your hand a little bit so it's like you're holding your own hand. And then you do this like this.
And that means that, that people will buy and sell their life and whole soul. People will sell their whole soul. Because when you sell Aina, that is not selling a possession. That is selling a whole soul. That is selling food for the next 10 generations of people that come from you. So we don't do that. We don't sell life and soul. We're different. The third verse talks about, uh, I don't know, Does the, um, does the, does the Jesus Mo'olelo, yeah? But in the Jesus Mo'olelo, it talks about Judas the traitor. And in this Mo'olelo, Judas is like supposed to be somebody who is for Pono. 
And in this Mo'alal, this person is supposed to be for goodness and for righteousness and for what is right. But he sells, he sells and he becomes a traitor. And so the third verse of this letter talks about that. But the fourth verse, the fourth verse, it says, Ike'ai Kala. Everybody say, La. 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 Everybody say, La. La. La is this thing that you see up, up in the sky. That is the sun. Ike'ai Kala Hemea Mehana. We see the sun, it's a thing of light. We are the light. Yeah. No matter how many years of no have, we are the light. You can go ahead, sir. Yes. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry, move on. <laughs> no matter how many years of no have, generation after generation, we will always be that pono. We will always be that light. Hanuai ikea okaaina. The first verse of this song says, "We breathe in the liberty, the sovereignty, the freedom of this land actively." But the people who continue to sell life and soul, yeah, let them go. Just let them go. Goodbye. Goodbye, sir. We're different. We're different. We're not the same. So this song is called Mele no Kapuni Lilani. Pili, 
it was pinned to that time, it was relevant to that time, and it's still relevant because we're still here. <laughs> we're still here in this space of Kue and Kui Kapono, yeah? Very 
is, is like until, but not until and then it stops. Ah is the kind of until that always was and always will be. So, aloa'ae kapono ka'aina means until the righteousness and the things that are right and good and necessary and appropriate for this land is restored. And con and continue. Yeah. So ma pe ma ko liuladi. Aloi ka pono ka ina. Ha ina ia mai na ka puana. So ka po e ia lo ha ita.
leaking this bottle of water. Hopefully, um, I can make an extension. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I can have it in the hundred years. <laughs> <laughs> so the song is called Aloha Aina Meds, and it includes um, some Lele Aloha Aina, some Aloha Aina songs. If anybody gets tired of hearing me talk, you just let me know, because then I can sit down. <laughs> and you ready? <laughs> Stand proud. of the morning, that is the people. We are the people. I gotta actually look at the, the literal translation of how Kumuhina translated it. But when I think of Eho Kakahiaka, what is it? So the, the actual literal translation, it says, it's a new dawn for our people. And, but that new, it has a K in front of it because we know this dawn and it's very old, yeah? So it's like the kauna, the kauna is thick, yeah? The kauna is thick. And then the, the ka kahiaka, to ka kahiaka, it means to strike, to strike a singular shadow. And so like in the morning time, yeah, when the sun just comes up, there's a shadow that strikes. And so we're just that same strike. We're just, we're just ka and ka and ka and ka, and we're here for that. We're here for that and we're doing it, yeah. Okay. For my nation and for my people, I give everything I am forever and forever. And so when we sing Kuha Ahel, like we do all the time, we remember that that's what we're doing. Not only over here with the signs, but in the ways we raise our keiki, in the ways we feed ourselves, in the ways we drink the water and not always die coke, die coke, yeah? But we say, no kuula hui, for my nation. No kuula hui for my nation, I will give everything that I, if you're not eating good, Paco, I'm just talking to myself out here, but if you're not taking care of yourself, how are you going to anything for anybody? So this food also reminds us to take care of ourselves and to be well and to eat good and to eat from our aina. The other Friday, Daniel Anthony was over here, and he was saying that in order to reclaim our pilina aina, we plant the iefe of our keiki, where we know we need to stay. Where we know we need to save. It's like a serious thing, like the ashes go plant them. Like my kupuna are buried here, my bada. This is not the Walmart parking lot anymore. Okay. You know, all of those things. Oh, look at those guys. Look at those guys. Look at those guys up there. It's just Mano Kuz. Mano Kuz just going. Just going. Going. Hell yeah. Just, they're just going. I thought that was one, but that was one rubbish. I'm sure. I was like, oh, four! <laughs> anyway, here's the other one.
to do with the area they call the non-contiguous Pacific area of which the Hawaiian Islands are located in the non-contiguous, we're not connected, okay? And it was for Secretary Luhan, it had to do with the Compact of Free Association, the kind of checking up on all of the people who are the resident, you know, left over from the wars. And this is what I said to them. They had on a suit, they had the admiralty there, and everything. You know, the brass, everybody. And so, at that time, the group that was prevalent was the Ohana O Hawaii, and Antipede Ha'o Ross. Through the 50 years that have been on this particular march, there have been many who have held these flags. So to see everyone and to be here now, coming from there, is a great privilege for me, that I'm still alive. And so what was said to the Secretary of Interior, this is exactly what I said to him. And they had representatives from the, the political subdivision, I call it the state of Hawaii. And I said to them, we don't need a revolution in Hawaii, but we need to change a revolting situation. Governor Ige and the President, Commander-in-Chief of the United States, so fighting, we need to correct and prevent the perpetuation of the fraud and the suppression of the inherent sovereignty of the descendants who live in the Hawaiian Kingdom. The Kanaka Maui. We're talking about the Polynesian Triangle. Rise up. We are not alone. We are just a shield for the rest of Polynesia. That's our kingship. That's our Bible region. That's our language. That is the the DNA, when it is in our opinion, we are like the opinion. And this is what I said. We don't need a revolution in Hawaii. But there is a revolting situation that needs to be corrected, President Biden. Hey, you brought it up in your election. You were going to fast track something for who? Native Hawaiians, excuse me, I am not an ignorant person. We are not ignorant. We know who we are. We are nationals. We are protected people, the Hawaiian Islands, and everybody in it. Okay. So, what happened after I said that? The standing ovation because the Pacific nations wanted to hear someone say 
What I said, stop perpetuating the fraud. If you take a penny from the military, that's blood money. That is the curse of Joab that has fallen upon the curse that is still there with the people of America. Hey, oh. It's blood money. The curse of Joab is upon the nation. It didn't happen at the time, but it's happening now. And the next event, so I had lunch that day with the brass, okay? And I like to sing this song, goes back to the time of Kaho Olave. <coughs> it is called, it talks about, stop bombing up paradise.
Our Lord said, remember me. So now, Allah, 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 petition all of a sudden this song came out I didn't even have to write it down and this was the song that was sung over there when Kanepo one big is sitting on the west wall of Washington DC that's why they gotta deal with us okay Kanepo Oh, Patriot. 
us California thousand strong Protest and taking of the sacred ground And the queen left a letter on the justice score And the patriots look on
You think the only people who love Hawaii is Hawaiian people? No. That's where they got it wrong. They trying to turn us into a racist, racist state. That's, that, that's, that's the, uh, the essence of the problem. They make our uncle fight a nephew, a brother fight a brother, a wife fight a husband. You call, that is called the Civil War. That is the condition that we have lived in since 1893, January 7th, and there shortly after, when the 13 guys said, you can be a part of us. And they put their guns in the military, standing over there, ready to kill anybody who wants to be loyal to the lawful government. I say government, as us. Hey, yo. The government. We talk about the kingdom, what is the kingdom? The people who's, who are gonna respect the laws. And they're already written. Our book is already written. So she asked me, she came up, she said, Nico, can you write a song about keep the country country? Here it is. Yeah, good time on just be so we play instrumental for the traffic cam. <laughs> we we'll get this down, we get this down. We've we'll been doing this for a while. <laughs> no. And this song, hey, this is nice time to have, because we can have concert right in the So the point is, you keep the country country, right? Yeah, in general terms, yeah, of course the country, you know, everybody's country, the sidewalk over there, the walkie over there, you know, everybody's got some pieces of face. But in our situation here in the Hawaiian Islands, it takes a country if you know what I mean. And this song is dedicated for our country. country country for as long as we live keep the country country what would you give would you give your heart and your body to set your
and keep the country country for as long as we live. The country provides, it'll keep you alive. Shine so bright. You have your time now. I'll take mine. We're gonna keep the country, the country. I'll take the country one more time. One more time. Oh, to keep the country, country. It takes a country if you know what I mean. Coming with the Luali, they wanna be the country, country. It takes the country if you know what I mean. Oh, don't leave me, you will be here. You keep the country, country. It takes the country if you know what I mean. So you can keep the rivers flowing. From the mountain to the sea. Oh, you keep the rivers flowing. Where should we be? Oh, I tell you where. The, the, right the forest green in the valley. Screaming by the mango tree. And the fire burning. To keep the country, country. We wanna keep the country. to look at our families, then we are in a dangerous place. Yeah. And the world is in a very dangerous place. So, President Biden, Commander-in-Chief, you can do it with a stroke of a pen. Then, after the Secretary of the Interior, the land freeze, 
We need to freeze the lands that have already been frozen to the heirs that the lands are already spoken for. Please stop somebody to come clean. Maybe number five. This will be the fifth president I'll be communicating with in my short time. Okay. George Bush was the best. <laughs> so, when he came to Hawaii, he stopped the federal recognition dead in its tracks. Because what the lawyer said, oh, this is not Texas. Hey, wait a minute. He sent his Texas Rangers down there to tell Abercrombie, and you know what I am? I ain't signing it, and you ain't putting it through, buddy. And that was the end of it. So be not deceived. The world, the people, the American honest people, be not deceived, for God is not going to be mocked. So this song, we all come to know this song. You know, one time in the election, I think Jack Schweiger was running for something. And this lady calls it, you never win anything with a song. <laughs> Guess what we want with a song? We win in our nation back. Hey, oh. Hey, oh. One song. One song. One song. Okay. And the person who was responsible for inspiring me to write that song was none other than a man who I knew very little of, but who to the world was Allah, and that's Mr. Donovo, who housed me in my malo and my long hair and my beard and my beads <laughs> during the time of Kohola, who came down and supported Reverend Akaka to bring Commander's Bowl to reveal what happened in 1893 and 1978 on the grounds of Yulani Tower. They didn't know what happened. We just took out the permit and we did our thing. Yeah. Or 77. Okay. So Don Ho asked me and said, people, write a song. Because I wanted to go back home. I wanted to go back to Konongna. Go back on the okay. So. Four hours later, all of us stand together. It was delivered to Don Ho. For all the people who loved him and how he loved his Hawaii. They had all his top classes and his, you know, goofy golfer shirt, our hat and stuff. And we had to pretend we didn't know each other. And he came up to me and he said, Nico, what you gonna do? He was very upset, to say the least. I turned around and there was nothing but Doc Vader's, all by Illumani Palace. It, it looked like some just nightclub was on Waikiki, the whole thing. He said, what are we going to do? So we talk to a little bit later. We had a little plan. But down the hall, for all our people, all our people who just being forced to serve the truth. Okay? We're all together, no matter what. The marching band rhythm version of all Hawaii. Stand together. So we need some animation. So we get the symbols And Rockwell and Pepper Joe was a good friend of ours. As I travel from place to place, some familiar, some must change to hear the ancient chanting of our home. It must be the season of cool. Story. My eyes have seen the glory. Now let's raise our voice in song to save our land. Oh, how I hate 
Genuous apology. Yeah. Has it gotten better? No, Absolutely not. not. Oh, it has gotten worse. They figure, hey, sorry, United Church, I'll give you a million bucks. Guess who to go on? Okay, all right, hey, don't worry. We got, we got food programs for you guys. And we'll build another prison over here. Form up. Form up. Into what? Kupuna Hale. Gather your knowledge from your families, whatever is left, whoever is left, whoever willing, and whoever is able. It's 
forma. The, the, the car missing some parts, something, the tire came off, we're missing something, reach out to the Aro Ohana. And get ready for oh, home oh. But we're gonna have to work together. Okay. Okay. We don't need a dollar from Uncle Sam. Okay. I wanna tell you share a story. My father, my father was an American soldier who came here and met my mother. As much as Queen Little Kalani bled in believe in the honesty that still exists in America. I love my father. Because without of that country, he would have probably been burned to a stake somewhere. And he came and he married my mother. And he's my mother's country. And my mother's people that have to stop getting persecuted. Honest Americans. Okay, what are you now saying? Father, thank you for the concert that you drew for us. You live here. Thank you for your prayers. Do what you can. In the Bible Bell, make it real. Make it real. Allah to all of Ohana over here. It's really a boost, you know, because, you know, but you know, running up all the weeds in the garden, all the suspects. That's, that's a, you know, yeah, that's a the floor. And, uh, and I wonder where, where the people that I'm um, really uplifted by seeing the appeal. Yeah. Yeah. And knowing that behind each, each one of you are hundreds. Yeah. And hundreds more behind each one of those hundreds in that line. And to all the Lahui out there who had to flee because of the economic, no more. What do you mean economic? What do you mean pay for Hawaiian home? What are you? Come on, don't sell me my own land. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Form up up there. I love you. Form up. Help your Ohana's back home. Their generators, their lumber, everything. We're gonna wait for handouts and tell the American people stop feeding the lie. We don't want to be propped up. Oh, these poor people. Oh, they need this and everything. I pay. That story is where we have gotten us nowhere. It's that divided us more. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Play one more song. <laughs> Do that song. That song. Yeah. Now this song, I'm in Washington, D.C. Okay. I know Washington, D.C. as well as I know this is where I grew up, my childhood. My playground was Kamehameha Statue, but my family were public servants to the territory of the time like that. What kind of model, you know? Model to public, to service, not politicians. To follow the rule of law, that's what the servant is here, to follow the rule. And even the boss that I don't follow them. Really. So here I am on court with the two with the two crooks. I went to court in Washington DC. I'm looking at Queen Little Kalani's 1897 letter. Protest. Official protest, which we filed again in 2016. And this is the song that came out. And, uh,
Just looking for mercenary archaeologists. Hey -oh. Guys who will come in who don't know nothing, hey -oh. who will sit in the trunk with their book, How to Recognize a Burial. That is what is going on in the Hawaiian Islands. I could say a good song, I could cry, I could cry, I could moan, but I'm going to lift up my voice. Stop it! Stop the genocide! Hey, oh. Our younger generations cannot raise their families now. Hey, oh, too expensive. Yeah, job. Huh. And when you turn around and look at the valley, what do you see? Albizia trees. You see the river coming down the road now. You know what's up the valley? And I looked out and somebody heard said, okay, they're gonna take a dollar for it. I said, you know, Mr. Military, bring your Huey helicopters, and bring your Army Corps engineers and clean up these valleys. So that the Hawaiian culture can come back because they're ready to go. You wanna help? You wanna be afraid? You wanna lift us out of the, out of the tradition that we're in? That is what some of the things they do. Don't give me money. Ain't enough. Even if they had asked me to all the state trucks and all the cars, what do you mean? I gotta go get a gun. I gotta go all the cars. I gotta go all the cars. I gotta go all the cars. And that's our yard. Hey, oh. In our country. Hey, oh. That's our old hollow over there. Hey, oh. They're driving by saying, good luck, cars. Good luck, cars. Stop the truck. Dang ball. Oh, yeah. We're coming up with the 
a new uh, Hawaiian musician, and he sings this song, and he says, No papa, and it means I'm gonna stay here forever and ever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's very expensive to live over here, and when people when people need all the shiny things, they feel like they have to move away. So I'm just grateful for people who decide to know her papa and to sit put. Yeah. Uncle, you really, you really, really help people to remember yeah. to stay here because we're of this place. And your music, it, kept, it keeps going and going and going. I'm so honored to sit here before you Expand today. Expand the Pu'uhonua. Yeah. Expand the Pu'uhonua. Too, too much families, not enough family units now. Mm. Okay? Uncles are gone, aunties are gone, grandma said gone, cousin them left, all my cousin, where they went. So, we have to form a kokua, just like Kalama Valley, kokua. Yeah. We need to kokua each other, yeah. okay? It's easy to sink into despair and sink into loneliness, okay? So this is the thing that I see, which is facing the new generation now, okay? There's so many have left, and it's a full court press. Okay? The more pressure now, things have not gotten worse in it. It is more pressure on your folks. So more now, you know. Also, keep in touch with each other. You know, really keep in touch with your generations. Start supporting each other as much as you can. Uonua works. One fire. Yeah, every Friday everybody come by, pick up Lao Laos. You know, I was in Honau now, 1977, to took Clara. Bishop of State, you know, said, no, you know can build one, Holly. Yeah? She told her, I meet you folks on the old battleground. Bishop of State never showed up, not like Kalama Valley. They were in somebody else's territory. They were in the people's territory. The Holly of Ho'oponopono went up. Right after that, some teacher up in Kona Waina did something to uh, Tutu Clara's grandniece, nephews. At first it was, all oh, the kids went, box the teacher, take over the classroom. But when Tutu found out what the teacher did, she pulled all the Hawaiian kids out of the public school system <laughs> in South Kona. All. They went boycott their stores because it wasn't an issue of education. Don't try to fake me out. We already have what we need. They had their chance. And if it takes that kind of action, you need a place where they can come. I happen to be there living in there with my malolos who now now. Okay. One fire fed the entire middle cave. Tell you, nobody. One fire. You could not, you couldn't even walk down there. There was no cars. There was nobody who come okay. put their boat inside you or take your opalu yeah, and go inside your koa while you say, trying to earn a Yankee dollar. It became a killing field, the schools. And now we know. How come the Land Use Commission for reclassified land? Are there any farmers out there? Are there any people who are trained since 1959 to drive tractor? Please uh, let me know. No more nothing. Wow. But the developers are there who want to change the whole thing. <laughs> so we really have to dig deep. We cannot rely upon the system anymore. Hello. That's going to be the magic. We have to get back to our indigenousness. Our indigenousness, okay, you know, we cannot rely upon the government. They don't want it anyway, which is a problem. And I wouldn't say, you know, I mean, that it's a problematic, but anyway, okay, Pu'uhonua, it works. It worked on the Mauna. That's how we work, that's how it is. That's how to regroup. You see people like this get together and stuff, but that's how you can reclaim some land. That's very difficult. Very, very difficult. Just husband and wife to take care. Even when you get tracked up. 
Okay, so hello calling. Hello, hello, mahalo, man. Okay, have a great second half. Oh yeah, I better get you. Chile, Chile, we got Chile. Okay, okay. okay. I'll be late. I'm gonna um, to go eat. I'm gonna close up with some pule, maybe. Chimu, 7.30 to 27 minutes. Okay, some 27 minutes of pule, kuka, kuka. Um, I, ju I just really wanna um, mahalo and see Nani for doing this. Um, this, is, this is super amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is really important because it's not only related to HB 499. Like how Mauna Kea was not only related to Mauna Kea. Mauna Kea ko'a ia ke kanaka. The people were awakened. The people were ignited after Mauna Kea. And they were ignited to this truth that was, we have a power. We have a power to say things. And now, this this hui ana, this gathering of, of urging Governor Ige to veto HB 499, that Antihia made sure she ko'alu kako, she brought us together. And this is a model to spark and ignite and activate us to continue to get involved with political things like Ayo. this. Mauna Kea was the body, and now this is the political body to remember to stay engaged politically. It's not only we wait till we gotta stand and lay our bodies Ayo. on the line. There's things we can do beforehand. Ayo. And so Mahalo and Tihalani for reminding us that there are things we can do beforehand. Hold their feet to the fire. Hold their feet to the fire, Uncle said. So I really Mahalo that. <clears throat> I'm going to do this pule, it's a pule o ola, and it is written by Enzike Kuhi, um, I think she's Kanahele, Kekuhi Kanahele, Kanaka Ole maybe, I don't think I'll own her, actuality of the name, many names, the anti, many names, yeah. Um, but so this pule was written for the, for the John A. Burns School of Medicine's Mala La Aula Pa'au. And this pule talks about healing and it talks about the akua that come together to heal. So as we are all out here waving our flags and being in the sun week after week, we gotta remember to heal and to rest, otherwise burn out and yeah. different nothing, yeah? So this pule is to help us to remember to rest. <clears throat> O ku kahikina o kala, o hina komohana o kala na au ma kua launa hele hele ho o ulu kana ka e maliu mai. O na au ma kua e aloha mai ka me ai ma i i a e kala vale kona hauni a me kona he ma he ma apau e a ka vai he vai hui kala e kala. E kala ho ilae E ia kala au He la au ku He la au moe He la au kolo kala au O ku ka akau o hina ka hema E ho mai i la au I la au lapa au I la au a kua He a a he ili he lau He liko, he pua, he hua kala au Ai kala au e ola E ola ho ilai Oho aka kamahina puka ke au Kalo a kamahina puka ke au Oku kamahina puka ke au O kane kamahina puka ke au O lono kamahina puka ke au Aho i ho ka mauli o la O ka pani na keia ua o O la koro pupu a ho maka i o le A palala u hala ka i koko A mama ua noa, a mama ua noa Let me take a deep breath But yeah, I come from a Christian family, but um, when, you, when you learn and when you elevate the frequency of your consciousness, you can understand how there's no dichotomy between the akua that, that they talk about in the Bible and the akua that we know in this aina, when you get to a certain, a certain truth. And so the Bible has a story, but also plenty of stories, yeah? A story of 
who story of Hina, story of Pele, story of Jesus, plenty of stories, but I'm Hawaii. And so I really appreciate the Hawaii stories because I'm Hawaii, you know. But so in Christian church, we are taught to close our eyes and bow our heads, and it's a solemnity. But in Hawaii, as I pull it, I learn to look. I learned to look at the different things that are around me, like these cloud patterns, which changed since I started to pule. And this moon, and the clouds that surround the moon, which changed since I started to pule. And that is the relationship that we have to Akua. That is the relationship that we have to Aina. Um, okay, I want you to eat now. Don't stay over here too long. Don't feel like you gotta stay. I'll let you go <laughs> eat you. <laughs> oh, he's the, yeah, yeah, that's the point. That's Again, the point. To follow better. Yeah. Oh, you following me? I'm following you. <laughs> I'm <ain't> following you. <laughs> Somebody make a place for both of us. <laughs> yeah. And so we're here for the Pule. It's now 7:40. We're gonna be in Pule another 20 minutes because um, the energy is high when the people are many. Yeah. And I think we forget how to how to be how to be a little bit more quiet and intentional with our energy. Um, but the people who are here today are are willing are willing to deepen into that solid energy of real real pule. And so the pule is that that David Nige really finds it in his heart to look upon the people in love and realize that we're standing in love, in love of our Aina Aloha. Not in violence, not in hatred, not in, in stupidity or arrogance, but in only true love. And so the pule is that he considers our request for him to veto this bill and do what is right for the Lakwe Kamaka that he serves. That's the pule. Um, this next pule is called Apoe. Apoe, Apoe. And uh, the pole is the night. Like, we're, this is like the pole. You see, it's like the darkness. But the pole is also this realm, this realm of creation, of creativity, of um, illogical things, of um, primordial things. The pole is a, is, a, is a realm of the feminine, of the of the of the rich of the deep the pole is that and then the owl is this realm of the masculine and the and the discipline and the cool of it the owl is the realm of the logical and the erect and the light and the fruition the pole is the potential the owl is the fruition so this pule is our poe to honor both of these realms this is the bullet. <clears throat>
the portal. The portal to the moon. Yeah. yeah. The portal to the moon. Oh, she always do that in the pool at time. And then I say, everybody look. And then everybody look. And sometimes she's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Just in that moment that she was. Yeah. Ooh. Eh, eh. <clears throat> this is saying, ah, boy. This um, next pulley because this is this is pulley time. Nobody feel obligated to stay. If you have to go. You have to go. This next pulley is one of my favorites. Um, I have a pane, and he's sitting over there in the red shirt. <laughs> he smells really nice today, even though he's working out there on Turtle Bay side. But my kane, it has two little boys, and their names are Kiki Amana and Kiki Ho'okamaha'o. And there's these two Kiki of so much mana. They have so much mana, these boys. And they come from a mo'oku auhau of so much mana. So their daddy is Kana Eaukuni Kiki Aku'uku Uvai Kanahele. And then their tutu is Amy Kanahele, who is sister to Bumpy Kanahele. So these boys come from a long line of Aloha Aina. And so when I sing to these boys, I sing them this pule to put them to bed. And this pule, my auntie taught me, my auntie Tiffany Kakalia. And this is pule ola no iki. Everybody say pule. Pule. Ola. Ola. Lo ihi. Lo ihi. Pule ola no ihi. It means pule for a long life. I'm gonna do it line by line so I can tell you what it means. And this is how I've learned it. This is how I know it. <clears throat> the first line goes like this. O ka uola ihe aku And that means um, your life, like life, the Akua. So we're beckoning to this divine force. And this Akua, we see it in the way that that tree was there so long. The Akua is what made that tree to start from a little tiny seed long ago and grow into a big massive tree. Now the Akua is the thing that did that. So we're calling on that force of truth and greatness and divinity. Okaola eke apua. Also, place life unto me, O divine one slash many. And that means care for me, watch over me, your um, Pula Pula, your sproutlings. Iola kaniko that I might live until the um, the sound of my ko'o pierces the ground. Kani ko'o, kani to make a sound ko'o like the ko'o ko'o that you walk on when you're old. Iola kaniko ahumaka So how maka iole means until you have like like the rat feet on your eyes. When you get old you get these rat feet on your eyes. And um when I think of that word, I think of things that are mushy. A pala lau hala. I don't know why I think of that, but like when things are like a um, like a papaya when it's really ripe, but a couple days after that it's mushy. Yeah. A pala lau hala. Iola kaniko o a pala lau hala. A kauika pua ane ane. 
and so the uh, ane ane means almost, like almost there, ane ane, ane ane pao, almost done. So until I am almost done, until I near the point of expiration, that's what that means, expiration, yeah. Um, and then this part says, And it means, at, at the end, when my cane makes a sound against the ground, and when the rat feet are on my eyes, and when I come into this point of uh, nearing expiration, take me to the face of Wakea. Take me to the presence of Wakea. Mauna Wakea, that is the mountain of Wakea. So when I am, keep me well, this Pule says, keep me well, keep me safe, keep me full, keep me happy, keep me strong, all the way until my cane hits the ground and the rat feet are on my eyes and I'm nearing the point of expiration. And then take me to the face of Wakea. That's what this pull is. So when I sing to these boys, I make sure that they know they, the boys, but also they, who the boys come from, to keep them strong and keep them well, all the way until their canes hit the floor and rat feet live on their eyes and they near the point of expiration. And then let them be taken to the presence of Wakya. And so um, we have 10 more minutes and I'd like to say this pule and then na omakua. And then maybe we go, yeah. Because we want we want Ige to veto HP four nine nine, but we also have to sleep, so you know, we're over here. <laughs> so this is um pule all about <sighs> Ige.
I will cover the eyes of the puhi so that your sister can get away. And so the covering of the eyes of the puhi is equivalent to Ige covering his ears from the things that are telling him to, to not be told his film. And so the opihi is our steadfast commitment to blocking out all of the heva and, and increasing the pule to pono so that the sister or the pono can return to the brother or the people. You know, so this have chicken skin because everybody loves this song, they know the words, but they don't know the words, you know. I can say that till I'm old watch.